Now, rather than go into a lengthy description, I'm going to demonstrate it for you by playing an improv game right now. In a moment, I'm going to ask for a volunteer to help me with something simple. But first, let me explain what I'm going to ask that volunteer to do. I'm going to tell you all the story that I make up here on the spot. Now, the volunteer is going to have this bell. And at any time you want, you can ring it. When you do, I have to stop my story, roll it back about a sentence, restate that sentence, but change it to something different. It can be anything at all, as long as it's different. So for example, if my story was, once upon a time there's a girl who had a pet dog, once upon a time there's a girl who had a pet cat, who had a pet mouse, who had a pet llama, whatever. It can be anything at all, as long as it's different. When you stop ringing the bell, I'll continue telling the story, but only as if that last thing was said. So in this example, the dog, the cat, and the mouse would be gone. We'd be left with a story about a girl and her pet llama. So it's very simple. Uh, this is probably the easiest thing I'm going to ask anyone to do today. So having said that, can I get a volunteer who wouldn't mind torturing me just a little bit? OK, someone in the back. Uh, come on up, sir. And what, while you're coming up, what is your name? Jesse Stewart, let's give Jesse a hand as he comes up. Excellent. You, yeah, you can come on up here. Welcome, thank you for helping out. All right, Jesse, I'm going to stand here. Go ahead. All right, then. That's comedy, baby. OK, uh, go ahead and give it a test ring just to make sure. OK. Now, Jesse, I'm working on the assumption you've never done this before. No. Okay, so there's not a right or wrong way. You can't do a right or wrong, but there is a rhythm that makes it more or less entertaining. So if I want you to go a little bit faster, I'll give you the let's pick it up signal. And if I want you to ring less frequently, I'll give you the let's get off the caffeine signal. Okay? Um, and I will say that uh, if you're uncertain, err on the side of ringing it a little more, because that's more fun for the audience. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Once upon a time, there was a man who had a fabulous job as a lawyer. He used to go into court and argue the most interesting cases. He used to argue the most boring cases. He would go in and defend jaywalkers. And one day, there was a jaywalker who came in and said, I need your help because they're putting me on trial for the death penalty just because I jaywalked. Now, they're putting me on trial um, for the uh, electric chair because uh, I am so shockingly jaywalking. And he, <laughs> I know, it's a bad joke. The lawyer, says, the lawyer says, well, wait a minute. That seems like an extreme punishment for someone uh, just for jaywalking. Are you sure that's all you did? And the guy says, no, I actually, uh, well, yes, that's all I did. Um, but I happened to do it while riding a scooter over an old woman. And the guy, I happened to do it while walking my dog who went on to uh, attack a police officer and eat him. And I did it while I was flying a UFO because I'm actually an alien from another planet. Now the lawyer is interested because all of a sudden his boring case involves an alien from another planet. And so the, man, the lawyer looks at the man and says, I think I can get you off if you're willing to take a plea. If you're willing to dance with me at my wedding, uh, because my wife doesn't dance and I want to dance. OK, uh, let's give Jesse a hand. Excellent job. Thank you very much, Jesse. That was great. All right. That's improv comedy, so now you know what it is. You make it up, you keep flowing. We have different rules to make it more interesting. Uh, real quick, the second question is, can you make a living doing this sort of thing? Uh, as I discovered, the answer is no. <laughs> OK, you, you can, uh, but it's very difficult. And what I learned in my journey trying to do that is that what I really love doing is teaching improv comedy. And I discovered one other thing, that the same skills that allow an improviser to play a game like this are the same skills that can lead to success in other areas, such as business communication or personal relationships. Now, you may have just watched this exercise thinking to yourself, now, how could that possibly help me in anything in my own life? Well, if so, I invite you to think about one thing. Life isn't scripted. No matter how much we want it to be with our agendas and goal setting and planning and visualizations, life is the ultimate improvisation. Let me ask you a question. Do things sometimes change? Do things sometimes not go exactly as planned? Do the people around you sometimes do inexplicable and seemingly idiotic things? Yes, because we're human, and it's because life is like a big improviser. And just when you think you've all got it figured out, he comes along and goes, ding, deal with this. It's like I say, you have to be careful, because ding happens. 
Now, I want you to experience what it's like to have ding happen to you. I'm guessing all you know about this presentation is what's written on the agenda. What you may not know is this is designed to be a very interactive presentation. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to play this ding game that Jesse and I just did. You're going to do it with a partner just sitting at your tables. So I'll explain how we're going to do this, but first what I want you to do is turn to somebody sitting at your table. So partner up. Okay, now, here's what you're going to do. One person's going to be the one telling the story, the other person's going to be the one doing the dings. Now, I know you're all saying you tell the story. <laughs> We're going to switch roles after a little bit, so you get to do both. Now, you don't have bells for the simple reason that if I gave you all bells, this would be the most annoying presentation ever. So what you have is your hand. So instead of ringing a bell, I want you to clap your hands and say ding anytime you want the person to change. So ding, ding. Just like Jesse did, with frequency, you can change multiple times on the same one. Just have fun with it. And uh, that's really all there is to it. Okay, good. Give yourselves a hand for playing along. Now in a lot of ways, that's how life works. You think you're going in one direction when all of a sudden life throws you a curveball, says ding, and then you have to deal with that. And what's interesting is that anyone can do well when everything's going right. It's like people who thought they were brilliant real estate investors just because the market kept going up. But when things changed, they got in trouble. Same thing with the dot-coms around 2000. Anyone can do well when all the conditions are right. What separates the winners from the people who fall by the wayside are how you deal with the dings of life as they come up. Think back, say, five years ago in your own life and where you thought you would be today. If you are not where you thought you would be, chances are it's because some dings distracted you. Whether a giant one that came out of nowhere and totally threw your life in a whirl, or just the little ones that come along every day, take a slightly off course, slightly off course. It's how we deal with those dings that keep us on track. Now your theme is great expectations for the year. And earlier today you were talking about the goals and the objectives you want to achieve. And setting goals and making plans is critical. But what's really going to ultimately determine, once you've laid those plans, is how well you deal with the unexpected events that threaten to throw you off course. So what I'm going to share with you today are three keys to great improvisation. Share with you how then you can use those to deal with the dings of life and also how you can apply them in general, because these are really foundational principles you can apply in a lot of ways.